This week on 3 minutes 60 seconds, I want to talk about a concept that is both simple and profound. It's called Zuchut Avot, and it means the merits of our ancestors. In one of the main prayers during the Jewish prayer service called the Avot, we bless God who blessed Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. In doing so, we remind ourselves that God's covenant began not with us, but with the original cohort of patriarchs and matriarchs of the Jewish people. And through that family line and through faith, we remain in that breed. We remain in that covenant. In this week's Torah portion called Chaye Sarah, we are told that the matriarch Sarah dies. It says that her lifespan was 127 years. As we mourn the death of the founding mother of Judaism, Sarah, we take special notice of that number, 127. As a side note, I always tell my students never to take numbers in the Bible too seriously. 127 years does not make sense to our modern ears, nor should it. But we understand that our biblical ancestors used numbers differently than we do today, so the number 127 sticks out like a sore thumb. And the rabbis of old were very keen to pick up on that exact number, 127, and they noticed that it also pops up later in the Hebrew Bible, in the book of Esther. As queen of Persia, Esther and her husband, King Ahasuerus, it says, ruled over 127 provinces from their seat in the capital of Shushan. In a midrash on the book of Esther, we are told that Rabbi Akiva shared a riddle with his students. Apparently, they were dozing off during one of his study sessions, and in order to pique their interest and wake them up a little bit, he asked them a riddle. He asked, why did Esther Merit rule over 127 provinces? To which he answered, it's because God took note of the 127 years of Sarah's life. And for each one of those years, God merited to Esther, or granted to Esther, 127 countries to rule over. For Rabbi Akiva, there was a connection between these two numbers. I know there are a lot of red flags and questions with this midrash, but let's not get caught up in the reality of the numbers or the geopolitical realities of the ancient Near East. There's a deeper and more beautiful message going on here. It's that oftentimes our blessings today are rooted in the righteousness and good deeds of our ancestors. If we think of Abraham, who was so faithful, we think of the moment of the binding of Isaac, he was so faithful that he merited being the father of the entire Jewish people. If we imagine Abraham's merit being a cup filled with joyous wine, and it overflows with so much merit that it overflows its edges and goes to the next layer of cups, all the way down to us today and to the future. Abraham's faithfulness is a constantly flowing, an overflowing cup of merit, and it is rewarded to each new generation. I receive merit to be in covenant with God, not by my actions alone, but because of the deeds of my ancestors. And it wasn't just Abraham's faithfulness, but it was also Sarah's hospitality and her righteousness. And a host of other good deeds by our ancient ancestors by their righteous deeds, we merit zuchut avot. We merit special attention from God. Sarah's 127 years are mirrored in Esther's 127 provinces. The deeds of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Leah, they are mirrored in the current generation of the Jewish people. The blessings God bestowed on them are eternal blessings so long as we remain in the covenant. Our blessings today are rooted in the blessings from long ago. As our ancestors' deeds lifted us up, may our deeds be worthy of lifting up future generations. Now go out and be Torah.